Brett, approaching Barbados. That has really been the theme for mm -hmm. whatever we're going to be seeing as we're tracking the tropics right now. Yeah, let's go ahead and bring in certified meteorologist Katie Walls again. Now, Brett, getting a little bit stronger, but right. that's not going to last too much longer. Thankfully, it is still expected to maintain tropical storm strength, not quite reach that hurricane status. Okay. Regardless, though, as of now, it looks like less and less of a threat to the United States, including the Virgin Islands as well as Puerto Rico. It's exactly the kind of progression that we like to see. We know that Brett will be affecting Barbados and the Lesser Antilles heading into tomorrow. So let's bring you the very latest track. Sustained wind 65 miles per hour. It continues that westward motion around 15 miles per hour. Per hour. So here's Barbados. Here are the Lesser Antilles right now. Barbados, St. Lucia, Martinique, as well as Dominica, all under tropical storm watches and warnings at this hour. Unsurprisingly, as the system approaches, expected to produce 60 to 65 mile per hour winds, big waves, as well as heavy rainfall there. Thereafter, over the weekend, it moves into the Caribbean and then it encounters some very strong winds, especially Saturday, dissipating to a very weak tropical storm, possibly even dissipating entirely. Over over the weekend, which as of now, that is what our models are expecting it to do. So notice Hispaniola right here, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands should be on the northern side of that system. On the back of Brett to the east, we have Invest 93L, which could very well become tropical depression number four. But putting those models into motion, the majority of those taking them off toward the north and west and then off toward the north, heading out to the Atlantic and possibly affecting Bermuda, but plenty of time to monitor both of those systems. Now let's take a live look outside what we're up against tonight, the storms, and you can certainly see that with an ominous sky from the Luminary Hotel, downtown Fort Myers. Here we are right now looking north towards Charlotte County, and you can see that deep gray and there we are looking at these storms right here, currently affecting really all of Charlotte County, stretching back towards Sarasota. And you can see where those storms are headed. They will continue that southward progression, producing pockets of heavy rainfall as well as frequent lightning. While we're not expecting necessarily anything strong or severe with this particular round, we'll still see some impacts, obviously, for those of you traveling. So. Just be sure, take it nice and slow. From the Cape Hayes Peninsula through El Jabin, Murdoch, up through Harbor Heights, Punta Gorda, Cleveland, really regardless of where you are in Charlotte County, you are dealing with those pockets of heavy rainfall and lightning. Same story on and off throughout DeSoto County, especially the southeastern quadrant of DeSoto, and then farther inland from Felda down toward Immokalee, still monitoring those heavy downpours right along 29. So if you are traveling that direction, just keep in mind that flood advisory in effect until 730. This area has already picked up several inches of rainfall and with more still falling, we could see some of that minor flooding. Otherwise, heading through the next several hours, we'll continue to see that activity even through 10 o'clock. I'll be tracking these storms for you on Fox 4 News at 10, but by midnight, things are much quieter. Tomorrow morning should be a fairly muggy but quiet start, and then it's the afternoon that will feature those showers and storms, especially farther inland. So just a heads up, especially inland, that's where we'll have the best probability for tomorrow afternoon. For tonight, we start off around 78 degrees tomorrow morning up to 93 for the afternoon, feeling more like 103 degrees, however, with that humidity.